Welcome to Tools, Tech, and Gear. I'm Seth. This is the DeWalt DWE 7491RS table saw. The RS means that it has a rolling stand and the 7491 is the model of the actual saw itself. Today I want to unbox this, assemble it, and do a couple of test cuts to see how well this table saw performs. So let's go ahead and jump into the unboxing and assembly of this table. I'm going to pull the two frame halves out. I've got one right here. Here we go. Just simply slide those two into place. The bag that has the tools also has two bolts and those are to be used to hold the two pieces of the frame together. So I find the uh, hole down here and just install that bolt on both sides. It's a little hard to see there with the camera and so I'm gonna just uh, tighten these up, take my word for it that these do exist. The axle for the wheels is gonna go here on this side using these bottom holes right here. I have some carriage bolts that will lock into the axle and then I'm gonna use uh, just some nuts on the back side to hold this in place. Now don't use the washers at this step. The washers in this bag are gonna be used for putting the wheels on. So just use the locking nut here and not the washers. I can use the included wrench to get these tightened up. Now it's time to get the wheels installed. I'm going to place this over the axle and this is where I'm going to use the washer and then also going to use the remaining locking nuts and get those tightened down here on both sides. Next, it's time to install the kickstand. It has two plugs that will go into the top here, making sure the holes line up. Do that on both sides. This came with four different nuts and bolts. I wanna make sure that the angle is facing away from the base here. I'm gonna use the bolt to go into this hole, and it's gonna go right here above the axle. The included wrench is nice, but I am using a socket set to speed up the process. Now in order to get the handle installed, I'm going to set the frame down because the handle needs to be installed kind of upside down right here. When installing the handle, you'll notice there are three holes on the pipe and that's to either allow you to have a wider handle or a more compact handle. Because my shop is small, I'm gonna use the more compact version. There is a plastic piece that's gonna go over the handle and it also has a place for the nut to go into, and that way it will hold it in place and you don't have to have two different tools. So I'm gonna use one of the bolts included to go into the hole, and that will line up here with this. Now to mount the stand onto the table saw itself, I'm going to flip the table saw up onto this box and that should allow me access to be able to get this installed. So let me grab over here and just flip this up. The instructions say to use a non-marring surface and this box seemed like the uh, most logical thing to use. All right, there we go. Now that I have the saw up on this box, I know the front is over here and also the power cord is right here. The 
uh, kickstand is going to be on the power cord side. And also, if you look on the uh, base here, it says front in this direction. So that should help you out whenever you're getting this installed. I'm going to pick this up, place it right here where it needs to be. And then I'll use the included bolts to get that installed. The bolt and washer go in to the top here. And that's going to then slide into that open hole. And then I'm going to use those nuts on the back side to get that tightened down into position. I now have the table saw fully assembled. Let's go ahead and get this stood up so we can take a look at it. I'm going to slide this off of this box so that it rests on the kickstand and the wheels. There we go. You can move this box out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and get the legs prepared for getting this stood up here. Now that I have the table saw totally assembled, let's take a look at all the features, and there are plenty of them to see. Starting here on the front side of the table saw, we have the power button, which has push to stop or push to start. And you can also squeeze and move this down so that it is locked and you can't access that on button. So for most of the time, it's gonna be sitting just like this. Now this right here will lower or raise the blade, depending on which way you spin it. Down here is the bevel lock. It's a little bit awkward to push, at least for now. So can I give it a push there and this whole knob can allow you to go up to a 45 or back down to a 90 and once you have it where you want it you just lock that back into position and it should stay this knob right here will adjust the fence location i'll have to pull the fence out before we adjust that but that's the basics there of the front of the machine the fence is neatly tucked off to the side. In order to get that off, I'm going to open up these levers here on both sides. And that is going to let the fence fall down and you can pull it out right here in order to use it over here on the other side. There are two screws that allow the fence to be attached to. You just let the front go in first and then it will snap down and you just simply Close these levers and the fence will be into position. I can then use the knob down here on the bottom and that will adjust the fence out to whatever distance you need. I'm gonna bring that out past the edge of the table so we can see what the fence can do. Sometimes when you're making a cut, you're gonna to want to have the cut supported over here. And so what this fence allows you to do is grab this back side here and you can pop it up and then let this rest down like that. And now there is a ledge that can support the piece even if it's way out here past the edge of the table. Very handy to have that. So if not needed, you can simply just bring that back around and snap it into position. Now on the back of the fence, you can also find your push stick. Pull that up and there you go. Easy to get to and uh, just snaps right there whenever not needed. If you need to get inside of the throat plate, you can unlock right here on the top and just lift this up and you'll be able to get inside right there, as you can see. Now moving to the right side of the table saw, I'm able to get to the blade guard down here. There is a knob I'm gonna turn and that will just release that blade guard so that it can be pulled and inserted into the saw. Also on the right side, you can find your dogs and these have a little push button on them that lets them come off of this little stand here so they can also be used. It's a good place to store them up there. Once you've found the place that you want the fence to be locked down to, you then use this handle under here. Once that clicks down, it has locked the fence into position and it will no longer move. As you can see right here, there is a riving knife installed on top of the blade. In order to remove that, there is a handle right over here, and that will be pulled out to relieve the tension on that blade. 
I can then use the same handle to open this up and allow me to install my guard down into the same hole. The push button is here on the side. I'm just going to place these over that hole, push this down, and when it locks into place, you'll know that it uh, doesn't move out of there. There we go. And those have the springs on them and your piece of uh, cut material can go through. On the back side of the saw, you've got this hole which will expel the sawdust. You can easily hook up a shop vac to that. And also over here is where your miter is gonna be stored. You can just pull that out. This miter has an adjustment so you can change different degrees and then you can lock it back down. And then it's easily stored back under here for transport. On the left side of the saw, there is a place that your power cord can be wrapped around and it does have the uh, piece here that will attach to itself and allow it to be securely stored right there. You can also press this little button right here and pull out the, um, the wrenches that will allow you to adjust the saw blade and also uh, have the correct spacing for the um, the fence adjustment there, the alignment. So anyway, to get that back in there, you just press down and then that little pop button will pop back up to hold those in place. I believe we've now looked at all the features on this table saw. The last thing to do is turn it on and make a cut. So I've got this half inch piece of plywood we're gonna use here for our sample cuts. For my test cuts, I'm just gonna use the miter here. Let's go ahead and push this into the track. There we go. And then I will be able to use this to uh, pass my pieces through the blade. I hope you found the unboxing, assembly, overview, and first use of the DWE 7491RS to be helpful and hopefully educational for you. I am very happy to have this saw. I'm actually using this one to replace a about a 13 year old rigid table saw and it had a very wobbly fence and just did not cut very straight. So looking forward to using this one in future projects. I'm Seth with Tools, Tech, and Gear. If you want to check out this table saw, I will have an Amazon link in the description down below. Please leave me a comment or a question down below in the comment section, and I'll see if I can get back to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.